Hello guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a simple AI with TensorFlow for Node.js. We will create a simple sequential model just to get started. So let's start from the beginning. First we're going to initialize a new Node project, so npm init. And uh, version 1, yeah, description no, entry point. For entry point we can use main.js. And just press enter for the rest properties. Yes. Now once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and install TensorFlow for Node. So npm install at TensorFlow slash tfjs node like that. And this will install uh, TensorFlow in Node.js for us. Now you might need uh, some other stuff like uh, gip or jip and stuff uh, but you will get, get warnings if you need that so if you get those warnings that you need that installed simply google for how to install the different libraries and then go ahead and continue with installing tensorflow for node all right so that's done and we can open up package.json and below scripts let's add a, just a simple start command and uh, let's say node main since main is our entry point so main.js and let's also create main.js like that so nice to, yes to check that everything works to begin with let's console.log test open up the command prompt and run npm start all right, so we got test login out here, so we're all set up to get started with the TensorFlow. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna include uh, TensorFlow. So let's call it uh, TF and make it a constant, since it's a library and won't change. Uh, require and it's called tensorflow slash tfjs all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a class which will make our code a bit more structured so let's create a class name it ai let's define two methods one called compile which we will use to compile the actual model before using it oops and then let's create another uh, method in the class called run. And yes, let's add a comment here. Compile model, run model slash predict. So we'll first compile the actual model, then we'll run the model. Um, we will use something called fit to train the model and then also predict, predict some values which we have trained the model for. All right. And yes, to initialize the class, we're gonna say, uh, uh, let's say const AI equals with new AI and then AI.run. And let's try, it out, try this out, console log test. And then start. And yeah, so the class is working as it should, and the run method is called. So right, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define the actual model. So let's create a new constant, name it model, and we're gonna use the TF library and create a sequential model like that. A sec sequential model is uh, any model where the outputs of one layer are the inputs to the next layer. So it's a simple stack of layers and that's the kind of model we will uh, create today and experiment with. Next, let's create the input layer. Uh, to do this we're gonna use the add method of the model. 
So model add and then tf.layers.dense. So we create a dense layer. I'm gonna add a units property, set it to three. And we're also gonna define an input shape. And define it uh, in an array with a value of three. So this uh, units property, it's the dimensionality of the output space. And you will see when we create the, the so-called tensors, which are basically arrays, uh, that the output space will be three. And the input shape is the shape of the actual tensor. Now the tensor will basically be a tensor with an input of array, with basically three array in a two-dimensional array. All right. So then let's create the output layer. Uh, same thing here model.add tf.layers.dance and we're going to define the units here for the dimensionality of the output space of the output layer and the output layer will have an output space of 2 all right The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, compile the model because we have only created the model now, the, the rules for the model. So we're going to go ahead and uh, type model and then the compile method. And we're going to use a loss function, which is mean squared error. The mean squared error lo loss function is a basically a risk function which measures the average squared difference between estimated values and an actual value. We're also going to use an optimizer and we can use SGD, SGD for this example. Uh, it stands for Stochastic Gradient Descent. So now the model is uh, defined and compiled. We're going to go ahead and uh, return the model so we can reuse it. All right. So now in the run method, we're going to actually use the model we just created. So to access the model, we're going to define model again, const model equals with this.compile. And this then, of course, re references the class instance we're in, which is the AI class. Then we're gonna create a new constant called access, which, which is the input layer. Uh, const xs equals with tf. Then we're gonna use a tensor 2d. Now you can use something called yes tensor, you can use tensor 2d, you can use tensor 3d. For this example, we're going to use a two-dimensional tensor because the array we will be feeding uh, will be two-dimensional. All right. So let's just give it some random numbers here: uh, zero to one, zero to two, zero to three, and then let's go ahead and. Uh, Create three of these. Now we're using three of these uh, in this example since that's what we defined for the input shape, right, in the input layer. And we're also setting the units here to three. And as you can see, each shape, which are totally three shapes, uh, contains each three units, right? So that's the actual input layer. And then we're going to create an output layer so we can get some result and we can train the model as well so let's say ys output layer it doesn't really matter what you call these i call them xs and uh, ys so const ys equals with tf.tensor2d And let's define some random numbers here as well. One zero, zero one, one one. All right. 
So the way it's, this will work is the model will be trained later to uh, uh, give when you give it an input similar to this, it should output one zero. This it should output zero one, and this it should output one one, right? So this corresponds to each uh, shape here. All right. And as you can see, we're defining in the output layer two layers, two units for the output space, right? For the output layer, which is this layer. And as you can see, we have two units here in each. Then we're going to go ahead and actually use something called fit. So model.fit. Now what this does is it basically trains the model. Or not basically, that's exactly, exactly what it does. And we're gonna pass it some arguments. First argument is the input layer, second argument the output layer, and then some config options. So for the config options, um, we're just gonna give it something called epochs, which we can change later. For now, let's set it to one. This is how many epochs we want the model to actually train or iterate the data we will feed it all right so it will go go over this training data over and over again until it learns for as many epochs as we specify all right then we're going to use uh, the then function and arrow function so we're not losing context of this let's see if we get this right now do, do, do. This is a function, so it should be defined like that. Then we're gonna say uh, we're gonna we have to actually feed it after we have trained the model. We have to feed it uh, some data to use uh, to predict the output, right, from which it uh, has previously learned. So let's just create a constant, name it data. And now the input data here has to be a tensor as well. So we're gonna create a new tensor 2D. Oops. And uh, let's give it some numbers. 1, 0, 1.0, 1 1.0, 1.0. Something like that just to begin with and then we can see and then we have to actually create the prediction so let's create a new constant prediction which will hold uh, the prediction results model.predict and we'll pass in the data right the tensor we has created and then prediction.print to print the data all right so let's just see here what we got there's an error there so let's try and run this and see what happens. Unexpected token, make JS51. Uh, I wrote something wrong here. Oops. That's a typo. Like that. Let's see what we got now. So yeah, we can see that it's working. So now before we actually try it, let's just go through what actually happens here. So first off, we are initializing the um, AI class and we're calling the run function or the run method inside the AI class. The run method uh, compiles the model with a compile method where we are defining an input layer and output layer. We are compiling the model and then returning the actual model, right? After that, we're creating uh, the data for the input layer, then the data for the output layer we're using fit to train the model in one epoch. And then uh, we're predicting some random data. You can try anything you want here. Uh, and predicting the results from the AI. So now, first off, let's change this a bit. 0 0.21, 0 0.1. Yeah, so we get some different training data here. Um, and let's create 1.0, 1 1.0, 1 and 1.0. 
All right, so now one dot zero should actually, when we're using the predict method, give us result of one and one, right? Since we're feeding this and one 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 and one one one, and it has been trained on this previously, so let's just see the results we're getting here. It should be close to one, but it's not, as you can see. We're getting 0 0.45 and 0 0.23 uh, as output. So then you can start to wonder, right, uh, that's not good at all. So what happens if we change the epochs here to 200, which means we're training the model more. And as you see, as you can see, we're already getting a closer result to what we want right here, right? So now we're getting 0 0.7, 1 0.01. All right, so let's up the epochs to 1,000 and try. Yeah, now we're really, really close to 1, right? 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So you can tweak these settings and you can check out the documentation for the API and see what different kind of loss functions and uh, and properties you can use for different methods and basically see how good of a result you can get and yes to try it again let's use this as input instead so this should output a zero and a one so let's see how good the ai is when it's training a thousand ep epochs so you can see it's pretty much off right here uh, 0 0.7 and then 0 0.08 it's pretty good I would say uh, this is pretty close to 1 and pretty close to 0 so now of course this is just some example dummy data and it's really not a lot of data normally you might have uh, thousands of different data points and three dim uh, dimensional arrays and so on and using three-dimensional uh, tensors as well. But that's how you create a really simple model with TensorFlow it's in Node.js. It's really not hard. And keep in mind, this is just a simple sequential model with dense layers, no LSTM layers or something like that, which make this pretty easy to work with. But just to get started, this could be a good starting point for you. So I hope you learned something and bye bye.